The research for this novel was particularly interesting because there's a lot of original letters that still survive today that you can even read online and they show a really very critical view of Margaret. A lot of people were reporting on her to her brother Henry, King of England, and they were saying that she was failing to keep her side of the peace treaty, or that she was dealing independently with France, or that she was betraying Henry's interests in Scotland. Then there's a lot of French spies working in her court as well, as well as Italian spies, all reporting to their courts and often very critical of Margaret. They're critical for a number of reasons, partly because she's a woman in power at a time where women in power are not welcomed, where they're not considered to be fit to govern, and partly because she is a very unreliable ally. In order to stay in power, she has to change sides very often, and she does this. She's also bribed by foreign powers, and she'll also really do anything that will get her son on the throne of Scotland. So what we have from history is a very critical, very negative picture of a queen who is clearly prepared to do anything, struggling hard to maintain her place in the world. And the Victorian historians, who are the great writers of Tudor history, take a very dim view of women like that in general, and of Margaret in particular. So anybody coming to a biography of Margaret starts off with this very negative history and it was one of the interesting parts of the research to reinterpret it, to say, yes, this is what men said about her at the time, but what I wonder was she really like?